Hello, my dear students. I am Associate Professor of Department of Human Anatomy and Medical Terminology of Azerbaijan Medical University, Anar Abdullayev. And the topic of our today's lecture is the topographic anatomy of the pectoral region, the topography and clinical anatomy of the walls of the pectoral cavity, soft tissues and organs, Topographic anatomy of the posterior wall of the pectoral cavity, mammary glands, diaphragm, topography of the mediastinum and the pleura. I have prepared the special plan for the more and more simply explanation of our today's lectures topic. First of all, I'll explain you the pectoral region and its topography. Then. I'll talk about the topography and clinical anatomy of the walls of the pectoral cavity, soft tissues and organs. Uh, topographic anatomy of the posterior wall of the pectoral cavity. And uh, at the third part of our lecture, I'll explain your the mammary glands, the diaphragm, topography of the mediastinum and the pleura. The chest, the, the commonly is known as the chest or the thorax which consists of the bony framework of pectoral region it's very important part of the body the thorax it is the bony framework not only bony also in formation of the thorax some cartilaginous element are presented the thorax is the upper part of the trunk it consists of an external musculoskeletal cage the thoracic wall and an internal cavity that contains the heart, lungs, esophagus, trachea and the principal bronchi. The thymus, vagus and phrenic nerves, right and left sympathetic tracts, thoracic duct, lymph nodes and mere systemic and the pulmonary blood vessels. Inferiorly, the thorax is separated from the abdominal cavity by the diaphragm. Superiorly, it communicates with the neck and upper lips. The thoracic wall offers protection to some of the abdominal viscera. The greater part of liver lies on the right arm of the diaphragm. The stomach and spleen lie under the left arm of the diaphragm. And the posterior aspects of the superior poles of kidneys lie on the diaphragm and are anterior to the 12th rib on the right and to the 11th and 12th ribs on the left. You are looking at this picture. The chest ratio or the pectoral ratio has uh, some uh, special projections or which are the very uh, simply palpable. For example, you are looking at the jugular notch and the body of sternum and the clavicles, both clavicles, which separate the, this region, pectoral region from the neck. Sulcus deltoid pectoralis, deltoid pectoral groove, which separates the uh, pectoral region from the deltoid region. And the linea axillaris posterior, posterior axillary lines. These are boundaries between the pectoral region and the back region. Of course, the fossa between the pectoral region and upper limb, I mean the superior part of the upper limb, the arm, form the fossa, axillary fossa, which is filled by the many lymph nodes and also the fat tissue. After removing of those, the fossa becomes the larger and transforms to the cavity, to the axillary cavity. And you are looking at the subdivisions of regions or the subregions on anterior and the posterior walls of the chest or pectoral region. Regio presternalis or simply saying the regio sternalis, fossa infraclavicularis and the trigonum clavio pectorale, which I'll explain this slide later, and the axillary regio. Regio pectoralis lateralis, regio pectoralis, and you are looking at the posterior side, the regio scapularis, regio vertebralis, the regio 
which corresponds to the pectoral uh, posterior part of the pectoral uh, region, the vertebral region. Of course, for identification and uh, simply saying just for finding of the projections of the many organs and the blood vessels, main blood vessels onto the surface of the pectoral region, we have to use the special lines, reference lines. Uh, horizontal lines are presented here and they are natural. Why? Because the, you know, the thoracic cage is formed by 12 paired ribs, uh, also 12 thoracic vertebrae and the uh, one sternum. And uh, each rib or the spaces between the ribs, they are very important landmarks, for example, for identification of the borders of the lung or the heart and first of all i have to show you special these lines because the as i have noted the horizontal lines are natural but also sometimes uh, we should use the vertical lines also these lines there but they are not natural they are imaginary for example linea mediana anterior anterior median line which is passed through the strictly through the midline of the thoracic cage and also linea mediana posterior which passes through the uh, spinous processes of thoracic vertebrae linea sternalis this line the, is appeared because the it passes uh, on the right and left sides of the sternum Midclavicular line or the linea medioclavicularis. Why midclavicular? Because it is passed through the midst of the body of clavicle. Sometimes this line is called the linea mammaria because it um, strictly passes through the nipple of the mammary gland. Linea scapularis, the also vertical line which is located on the posterior wall of the thoracic cage um, uh, vertically passes through the inferior angulus of the scapula linea axillaris anterior linea axillaris media linea axillaris posterior these three lines are passed through the anterior middle and the posterior boundaries of axillary fossa and if we will return the, to the this picture about the shape of uh, thoracic cage it's variable uh, this cage is pyramidal shape in newborn because the development the of liver due the development of liver in newborn and the less development the weak development of superior aperture of the thorax the uh, thoracic cage of the newborn looks like the pyramid and the thoracic cage has the anterior wall uh, posterior wall and the lateral walls anterior wall is formed by the uh, sternum the like the very short uh, sword this bone very interesting bone with the manubrium with the body and the xiphoid process and anterior wall is also is formed by the cartilages mainly of the true ribs and the inferiorly you can look at the inferior aperture and before it the, at the uh, costal arch costal arch is formed by the cartilages of the tens nines eights uh, ribs and these cartilages at the each side at corresponding side are connected to the cartilage of the seventh uh, rib and they together form the costal arch uh, very important uh, landmark for the palpation of the liver and the other organs the, depending on the body position lying on the standing erect is a very important uh, which, about which we'll talk uh, during our uh, next lecture and also you have to know the angulus angulus infrasternalis uh, 
it's, it locates just uh, at the point when the two parts of this coastal arch meet and the posterior wall of thoracic cage is formed by the bodies of thoracic vertebrae and the head heads of the ribs and as you know from the course of the anatomy uh, each rib except of course the 11th and 12th rib uh, each rib connects with the thoracic vertebrae at two points head of the rib connect with the body of the uh, thoracic vertebrae and the tubercle of the rib connect uh, connects to the transverse process just 11th and also 12th ribs they connect only to the body of the corresponding vertebrae and they are known as the um, floating ribs or the free ribs uh, lateral walls of thoracic cage is formed by the bodies of the ribs and we have to know sometimes we uh, should use uh, special mathematic indexes uh, for the identification of the shape of thoracic cage uh, for example it's the very simple index its relation of the transverse size of thoracic cage to its uh, its anterior posterior size uh, and if this index less than 130 we are talking about the dolichomorphic uh, thoracic cage when this index between the 130 to the uh, 140 this thoracic cage is mesomorphic and if the more than 140 we are talking about the brachiomorphic uh, thoracic cage and in this picture also we have to also the discuss the shape of the thoracic cage it can be longer uh, but the thinner and the, uh, the dolichomorphic persons of course and maybe it's the barrel shaped in the brachiomorphic persons of course and the um, conical in shape mainly in the mesomorphic person uh, you know the shape of thoracic cage uh, is depend on the um, sex age features also race features and the other many other factors uh, can the influence on the shape of thoracic cage many pathological uh, variations of the thoracic cage uh, are known in the literature uh, like the shoemaker uh, thoracic cage or flattened thoracic cage after the some uh, the diseases the thoracic cage the shape of thoracic cage uh, can be deformed uh, um, during the some congenital abnormalities also thoracic cage uh, can change its shape the it form the several um, another forms that if you are looking in this picture it's the superior aperture of the thoracic cage of course it's the less by the size than the inferior aperture superior aperture of the thoracic cage is the bordered posteriorly by the first thoracic vertebra anteriorly by superior border of manubrium sternum and the side by side by the first ribs at the right side by the right first rib at the left side by the uh, left first rib inferior aperture is larger is larger uh, of course the it begins at the level of the 12th 12th uh, thoracic vertebrae then pass uh, through the anterior ends of 12th and 11th ribs and uh, reach to the uh, costal arch and reach to the angulus infrasternalis and when we are talking about the landmarks first of all i have to note the thoracic vertebrae because the yes we have the 12 thoracic vertebrae and it, the many of them are very important sometimes the each one that is important several times for identification of uh, bony structures are the bony structures i mean the scapula for example also for identification of the uh, for finding of the blood vessels of the pa part of the internal organs for example look at this uh, table 
at the level of the first thoracic vertebra, the superior border of the scapula locates. The disc between the second and the third thoracic vertebrae corresponds to the jugular notch of the sternum and T3, I mean the third thoracic, it corresponds to the medial border of the scapular spine. At the same time, it is the posterior end of the pulmonary oblique fissure. The disc between the third and fourth thoracic it corresponds to the tracheal bifurcation and also it's the point it points the root of the aortic arch the disc between the third and fourth thoracic it's the level of the manubrium stern manubrium of the stern t4 the end of the aortic arch t4 i mean the fourth thoracic vertebra it points the where the aorta the arcuate part arch of the aorta ends and descending part of the aorta begins t4 t5 i mean the disc between them it corresponds to the sternal angle what does it mean sternal angle you know uh, there is the our sternum which has the manubrium and uh, the body also xiphoid process and the manubrium with the body connects by the cartilage it uh, makes the this part of the sternum less or more movable but uh, and we can also very easily we can palpate this point under the skin and but these two parts of the bone uh, form the angulus which opens internally sternal angle or the angulus of Louis. Uh, this angulus is important when we will provide the imaginary line for separation of the superior and the inferior mediastinum. This line begins at the level of the disc between the T4 T5 and it passes to the sternal angles. T5 points the thoracic duct, the point where the thoracic duct crosses the midline. Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth thoracic vertebrae are corresponded to the sternum. Six thoracic vertebrae also indicates the superior border of the liver. And the seventh thoracic vertebrae, it corresponds to the inferior scapular angle. And also at this point, the accessory hemiazygous vein crosses the midline on the, to the right and opens into the azygous vein. T8, 8th thoracic vertebra. It corresponds to the uh, special hiatus opening of the diaphragm for passing of the inferior vena cava. Also right phrenic, ver ne phrenic nerve passes here, but the left phrenic nerve pierces the diaph diaphragm to the left of the central tendon. The hemiazygous vein also at this level crosses the midline to the right and opens into the azygous vein. The disc between the 8th and the 9th thoracic vertebrae, at the same time it points the xiphosternal synchondrosis, I mean the cartilaginous joint between the xiphoid process and the body of sternum. Superior epigastric vessels, I'll talk about them superior epigastric vessels pass through the diaphragm uh, at this level and the xiphoid process also is located at this level. T10, the 10th thoracic vertebra, it corresponds to the esophageal hiatus of the diaphragm. At this point, at this level, esophagus passes through the diaphragm with the anterior and the posterior vagal tracts. 12th thoracic vertebra, it corresponds to the aortic hiatus of the diaphragm for passing of the aorta, azygos and the hemiazygos veins and also thoracic duct. Origin of the celiac tract, inferior border of this vertebra, the first branch of the abdominal aorta begins at this level. Splanking nerves pass through the crura of the diaphragm, uh, I will show the crude of diaphragm and sympathetic tract passes below the medial arcuate 
ligament also transpyloric plane it also locates at this level the thoracic skeleton for repeating consists of the 12 thoracic vertebrae and they are intervening the intervertebral discs midline and the posterior 12 pairs of the ribs and their costal cartilage predominantly lateral and the sternum this is the midline or anterior when articulated they form an irregularly shaped osteocartilaginous cylinder reniform uh, in the horizontal section and which is the narrow above and the broad below flattened anterior posteriorly and the longer behind laterally the thoracic cage is convex and it's formed by the ribs mainly by the body of the ribs anterior is slightly convex and is formed by the sternum and the distal part of the ribs and their costal cartilage the first seven pairs of ribs are connected to the sternum by costal cartilage the costal cartilage of the eight to ten ribs usually join the superjacent cartilage and the 11th and 12th ribs are free floating at their anterior ends you are looking at the anterior wall of the thoracic cage you know uh, the um, last uh, during my last lecture i uh, explained your the interscalenic space and uh, we told about the um, subclavian artery and the subclavian veins subclavian artery locates within the interscalenic space subclavian uh, vein locates uh, within the antiscalenic space and in relation to the this space subclavian artery is divided into three parts and the first part of, of this artery corresponds to the not to the interscalenic space it is located before interscalenic space and here the subclavian artery gives off the arteria thoracica interna which is very important artery very important artery it descends um, at the right and the left sides along the uh, borders of the sternum reach the seventh or the eleven uh, seventh or the eighth ribs and here uh, divides into its the terminal branches which are the followings arteria musculophrenica and arteria epigastrica superior arteria epigastrica superior from the uh, system of subclavian artery and the arteria epigastrica inferior from the system of the external iliac artery the main artery which supply the, supplies the uh, lower limb they form the anastomosis it's also great example of the intersystemic anastomosis and please imagine they are the venous analogous the superior and inferior part superior epigastric vein and inferior epigastric vein uh, vein epigastric superior vein epigastric inferior superior epigastric vein forms the root of the finally the superior vena cava and the inferior epigastric vein forms the root of the inferior vena cava it means that between two veins these two veins on the anterior wall of the abdominal cavity the special anastomosis between the two cover veins is formed and we'll continue of course i told you about the superior aperture the size of the superior aperture is the anterior posterior size the five centimeter and the frontal size the distance between the medial borders of two uh, right and left first ribs is equal to 10 centimeter but it is the if you want the door if you want the opening between the neck region and the neck it's the just the transition to the head and all main blood vessels which originate from the heart they pass through the superior aperture to the neck region you have to know the topographic anatomy of this zone very well and you are looking at this picture um, more and the more information you can derive from this picture you are looking at the internal jugular vein the vena jugularis interna and the subclavian vein right and left subclavian veins 
together they form the first of all venous angulus here's the right and left venous angulus and they form together the brachiocephalic veins brachiocephalic vein here uh, posterior to the sternoclavicular joints and the two brachiocephalic veins form the superior vena cava just behind them the first maybe second uh, sternocostal joint but this connection happens at the right side from the midline it explains that the left uh, bra the, the left brachiocephalic vein is longer than the right one and the formation of the superior vena cava you are looking at it manubri sternal joint and the six is the concavity of the aortic arch typically sitting inferior to the sternal plane look at it please level with the upper half of the fifth thoracic vertebra seven it explains the azygos vein entering the superior vena cava azygos vein one of the main uh, important veins of the uh, pectoral cavity but it's it origins in the abdominal cavity by the connection of the free ends of lumbar veins they form at the right side ascending lumbar vein and when it pierces the diaphragm and pass into the pectoral cavity will change its name and the right ascending lumbar vein becomes the vena azygos azygos vein entering the superior vena cava it means the by why the azygos vein inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava are connected typically it sits i mean the azygos vein it sits inferior to the sternal plane level with the lower half of the fifth thoracic vertebra also you have to know all this topographic moment tracheal bifurcation typically it sits the inferior to the sternal plane level with the upper half of the sixth thoracic vertebrae and the bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk you are looking at it level with the upper half of the sixth thoracic vertebra approximately three centimeter inferior to the sternal anchor all these topographical moments uh, are very important and in this picture also you are looking at the some the topographic moments for identification of the borders of main organs look at this picture the first number first explain the right acromioclavicular joint second is the clavicle and the mid clavicular line although uh, mammary line because it passed strictly through the nipple of the mammary gland also apex of the right lung located posterior to the middle third of the clavicle here and the apex of the lung uh, is corresponding to the head of the first rib or if you want it locates two or three centimeter above than the clavicle or the three or four centimeter above than the anterior end of the uh, first rib are you also looking at it, the sternal notch of the manubrium sterni or the just the, um, the jugular notch the trachea may be located here by posterior palpation the sternoclavicular joint by the number five it indicates the sternoclavicular joint marks the junction of the internal jugular vein and subclavian vein or the venous angulus to form the brachiocephalic vein six the zone of formation of the superior vena cava its projection onto the anterior thoracic wall uh, from first intercostal space to second costal cartilage level uh, in 78 percent of the subjects it is the white zone here and the sternal angle or the angulus oului marks the level of the sternal plane and the second costal cartilage the sternal plane for separation i told you the upper and the lower mediastinum Eight, uh, where is the eight? It indicates the uh, our pectoralis major and the anterior axillary fold or the anterior axillary line. Nine indicates the horizontal fissure, which you can find only on the right line. 
also the tint it indicates the at the right also at the left side if it's present the oblique fissure right oblique fissure actually the 11 the lower anterior border of the right lung it corresponds I'll explain uh, by the mid clavicular line at the right side to the six rib and uh, <clears throat> typically the either the six intercostal space or the seventh rib in the mid clavicular line then it passes to here the 12 lower anterior border of the uh, left lung typically the other at the fifth rib or the fifth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line yeah because the heart locates mainly to the left from the midline and the 13 is the xiphosternum 14 it's the costal margin and the 15 is the tense costal cartilage from the lower part of the costal margin here dashed black line and if you are looking uh, onto the uh, pectoral region from the posterior side is also surface anatomy of the posterior thorax the levels of the spinous process of the third ninth and twelfth thoracic vertebrae and the first lumbar vertebrae are indicated in the midline uh, first indicates the border of the left lung a second indicates the oblique fissure passes anterior inferiorly from the spinous processes of the third thoracic vertebrae which i have noted the about importance of the third thoracic vertebrae to cross the fifth rib in the mid axillary line the upper lobe of sits superiorly and the lower lobe inferiorly three indicates the lower border of the left lung here and you have to know this is often located at the level of the 12th thoracic vertebra but may be lower at the level of the first lumbar vertebra adjacent to the vertebral column and end tidal inspiration dashed blue lines indicate the range of levels for the lower border of the lung here nine thoracic vertebrae to the first lumbar vertebra for 12 strip this is 12 strip it can be traced super immediately to eight identification of the spinous processes of the uh, 12 thoracic vertebra uh, and you are looking at the uh, thoracic cage uh, with the organs which are located here we told about their projection onto the walls of the thoracic cage and for the simple identification of this moment you have to know the relation of the pleura and lungs to the chest wall it's the right uh, lateral aspect you know the each lung is enclosed by the uh, special sac pleural sac and the um, right lung its topography and the left lung its topography um, it's uh, this is the very important clinical moment and for each lung for the right and left lung the apex their apexes are corresponded as i have not the to the level of the head of the first rib or the two or three centimeter above than the clavicle or three or four centimeter above than the anterior end of the first rib but then the anterior border of the right lung begins just behind than the corresponding sternoclavicular joint and it descends it descends till the second sternocostal joint and at this level the anterior border of the right lung locates in this picture you are looking at it, to the left to the left from the midline and by this way it ends till the fourth uh, sternocostal joint after fourth sternocostal joint it uh, returns to the own side and the passes i mean the anterior border of the right lung passes to the inferior border at the level of the sixth sternocostal joint i mean the strictly when the sixth costal cartilage joins to the stern
I can't say the same thing about the anterior border of the left lung. Of course, beginning is the same. The anterior border of the left lung begins behind than the corresponding sternocostal joint, like at the right side. Then it descends till the second sternocostal joint, but it locates to the left side, from midline. Ends till the fourth sternocostal joint being to the left from the midline, and then very obliquely it crosses the fourth, then fourth intercostal space, then the uh, fifth rib, and uh, passes to the to the inferior border at the point when the rib, the bony part of the sixth left rib, and its cartilage joins. It means there is the special space between the two anterior borders, right and left, below than the fourth ribs and above than the two right and left second ribs. Area, interpleurica, we'll call because the each lung is enclosed in the sac, not the lungs, lungs are not naked, they are within the pleural sac. Area interpleurica, superior or timica, for the cushion of the thymus gland, just behind than the manubrium of the sternum, and area intrapleurica inferior, which is located inferiorly than the right and left uh, four sternocostal joints or pericardica. This area also is called the pericardica. For uh, location here is the pericardium. What about the pleura? Yes, pleural sac also. Also, it repeats each pleural sac, repeats the same line, same direction, but it locates, I mean, the inferior border locates the one rib below than the corresponding line. And the parietal pleura divides here, you know, the, like the each serous membrane, the also pleura divides into the visceral, which very intimately, very close to the mass or to the uh, each lung uh, if you want to separate the visceral pleura from the lung corresponding lung you can damage it but parietal pleura it uh, covers the diaphragm it covers the ribs and it also covers the uh, mediastinum and the parietal pleura divides into three plates three lamina the diaphragmatic costal costal is the larger and mediastinal and they transition to each other, diaphragmatic to the costal, costal to the mediastinum, form the recesses, recesses. Uh, they form the parietal pleura, the reservoir, with the very great reservoir for the during the movement of the each one. And you are looking at the anterior thoracic wall. Um, I told before the, that the. Mm, muscles of the this uh, region are divided into the superficial and the deep group. Superficial muscles are the also are called the muscles which related to the upper limb. These are the pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, uh, serratus anterior, and the subclavius muscles. Uh, you are looking at the anterior thoracic wall. This is the musculus pectoralis major in this picture the musculus pectoralis major uh, at the left side uh, has been removed just you are looking at the pectoralis minor muscle this triangular e shape and uh, this muscle it's the triangular shape makes the three triangles on the anterior wall of the axillary cavity the claviopectoral and here is the deep um, fascia of this region from the sickness, uh, fascia clavio pectoralis, also trigonum pectorale, which corresponds to the, oh, the this pectoralis minor muscle, and trigonum subpectorale, trigonum clavio pectorale, trigonum pectorale, and trigonum subpectorale. At the next picture, uh, you are looking at the moments. Uh, from the skeleton to the formation and the covering by the muscles. The anterior 
serratus muscle musculus serratus anterior uh, which form the lateral wall of the uh, pectoral cavity it begins from the upper eight or nine ribs and the uh, uh, serrate translates like the tooth like by the eight or eight or the nine uh, tooth like projection and it goes to back and attach to the medial border of the corresponding scapula and to its inferior angles and during contraction of this muscle the scapula rotates around the uh, sagittal axis and the hyperabduction is possible hyperabduction means the elevation of the arm upper uh, than the horizontal line you are looking at the pectoralis major muscle the, and the, it's called the, by the other muscle from the common shape the, in this picture it's very important the pectoralis minor muscle pushing the pectoralis major outward uh, from underneath it's very important look at the projection of the uh, pectoralis minor triangular shape muscle can elevate the pectoralis major muscle an anterior thoracic wall again when we uh, told about the superior thoracic aperture this is the superior thoracic aperture with the muscles and the other elements uh, this is the anterior scalene muscle and the middle scalene muscle you are looking at the uh, interscalenic space with the uh, subclavian artery here is the antiscalenic space manubrium sterni and uh, this region the uh, superior thoracic aperture is filled by the muscular elements and uh, what about the proper muscles of the uh, this region proper muscles of the chest they are uh, there are inspiratory and the expiratory muscles external intercostal muscles look at the direction of this muscle again these muscles uh, they fill intercostal spaces and they reach just the point where the bony part of the rib passes to its the cartilaginous part and uh, you are looking at the internal intercostal muscles they are located at the inner side from previous muscles and um, also innermost layer the most uh, internal group of this muscle uh, also they act like in their internal intercostal muscles they are expiratory muscles and along the inferior border of each rib past the intercostal vein artery and the nerve v a n by this uh, the very important rule v a n passing of the these structures intercostal structures and uh, for example uh, injection to here to thoracic cage uh, above the uh, superior or the below the, the you can uh, you have to choice you have to know the inferior border of the each rib is the place where the three um, structures the vein artery and the nerve pass uh, thoracic wall mass again you are looking at the innermost intercostal muscles the most internal group of these muscles locate on the internal wall of thoracic cage and again you are looking at the elements of the vein artery and the nerves this layer the external intercostal muscle of course the internal intercostal and the innermost layer and you have to know the fascia of this region there is the superficial fascia it's very important um, it covers the pectoral muscles I mean the, of course the super superficial group of the muscles and um, it passes into the mammary gland uh, separates the mammary gland and uh, form the ligamentum suspensorum for the mammary gland and the proper fascia also has several layers it covers the uh, pectoralis major muscle and also posterior it covers the pectoralis minor muscle subclavian muscles and deep uh, fascia at the uh, triangle between the clavicle and the pectoralis minor muscle form the uh, fascia clavico pectoralis and elongation of superficial and the proper fascia of the uh, this region form the uh, fascia of the axillary fossa 
and you are looking at the again intercostal VAN at this level vein first of all then the artery and the third of the nerve the same picture but the for the marking the three different structures I prepared these pictures these three pictures together for you and the anterior thoracic wall the internal view also is very important you know that we have the in addition to external and internal intercostalis muscle also subcostal muscle musculus subcostalis which is located on the posterior wall of thoracic cage and the direction like the intercostal internal muscle and also musculus transversus thoracis which is located in the anterior part of the mediastinum just behind then the xiphoid process and the body of the sternum again you are looking at these structures intercostal nerves vessels and the uh, vein arteries the intercostal veins and the arteries the special uh, subject for conversation these arteries are the branches of the thoracic iota thoracic iota uh, gives off the 10 pair uh, the uh, intercost posterior intercostal arteries and uh, except the first and second intercostal spaces they begin to ramificate uh, begin from the third intercostal space and the last one is called the arteria subcostalis because the, there is no rib on the uh, 12th rib the last one the 10th one uh, is known as the arteria subcostalis and each one that gives of the muscular branch and you have to know they supply not only the uh, muscles of the pectoral region they also reach the abdominal region till the hypogastric region till the hypogastric region muscles of the abdominal uh, cavity like the uh, external oblique abdominis internal oblique abdominis muscle rectus abdominis all of them are supplied by these arteries and uh, what about the our diaphragm diaphragm it's the ampere muscular structure it covers uh, it closes inferior aperture of the diaphragm it divides it has the muscular portion which is known as the musculus phrenicus and the tendon part tendinous part centrum tendineum with the opening for the inferior vena cava and the muscular portion of this uh, diaphragm uh, musculus phrenicus divides into the lumbar part uh, the costal part and the sternal part lumbar part at the right side uh, begins uh, by the cruise by the special leg from first second third fourth uh, lumbar vertebrae at the left side also the left cruise begins from the first second and third lumbar vertebrae then they arise and ascend um, till the first lumbar vertebrae and here they cross each other and form the hiatus for the iota aortic opening and to the up and the left they form the also opening for the esophagus I have explained them for uh, which structures uh, to which structures these openings are belonged and if you are looking again the median arcuate ligament which connect them connect them it's very important moment and you are looking at the diaphragm of course if, if when you are looking to, at the diaphragm from down to up it looks like two, two dumps are formed here the right thumb locates the upper uh, above than the left thumb at the level of the fifth rib locates the our right thumb and at the level of the sixth rib locates the our left thumb due the location of the liver due the large size of the liver phrenic nerve uh, this nerve is the longest uh, branch of the cervical plexus and it's the boss it has the boss the muscular and the sensory uh, fibers uh, it goes uh, between the uh, subclavian artery and the subclavian vein it, it's it's located anterior in front of the subclavian artery but behind than the subclavian vein 
entrance into the thoracic cavity being before located on the anterior surface of the musculus scalenus anterior and uh, in thoracic cavity it supplied the uh, mediastinal pleura it also supplied the pericardium and reached the diaphragm the right phrenic nerve also pierces the diaphragm and enters into the abdominal cavity here it innervates the ligaments of the uh, liver it's the skin special diagram for the passing of the look at the left phrenic nerve it turns around the heart pericardial sac and because it's longer slightly but the longer than the right one and again you are looking at the intercostal external intercostal internal muscles and anterior thoracic wall and the formation of the anastomosis between this superior and inferior epigastric arteries are here veins also of thoracic wall also they correspond to the arteries and uh, I told you about the uh, as it goes vein, as it goes vein, also the um, opens into the superior vena cava, the skeletal landmark for the pointing this moment. Also, I explained you and uh, about the topography of the lungs, right and left lung. Uh, we had the discussion and they look at the location of the heart between the two pleural sacs. And again, you are looking at the heart its location heart locates between the second and fifth intercostal spaces but uh, if we are talking about the part of the heart right ventricle except the auricle interatrial septa the small part of the right uh, ventricle and also the left atrium are located to the right they are more part are located to the left also here they located the left ventricle interventricular septum and the auricle of the right artery uh, the second intercostal space is the superior but it, it corresponds to the superior border of the heart or simply saying the line which connects the superior borders or the of the right and the left uh, short ribs this uh, the border superior border of the heart then the right border descends right border descends uh, till the connection of the uh, fifth right rib with the sternum being located one or two centimeter to the right from midline then it crosses the midline and passes to the apex apex is located by the mid clavicular line in the fifth intercostal space one or 1.5 centimeter uh, to the medial from the left mid clavicular line and above the uh, also the blood vessels uh, the main blood vessels their parts like the aortic arch also uh, all these structures and their, their their relation to the bony landmarks also they are explained by me and the mediastinum you are looking at the topography of the mediastinum mediastinum is the sagittal oriented space uh, between the sternum and the bodies sternum anteriorly bodies of the thoracic vertebrae posteriorly and two pleural sacs side by side at the right and left sides and the mediastinum this space is separated to the superior and inferior mediastinum by imaginary line and uh, this line passes uh, through the angulus between the manubrium and the body of sternum till the intervertebral disc between the fourth and the fifth thoracic vertebrae all structures which are located above this plane are organs of the superior mediastinum like the aortic arch and its branches like the um, uh, brachiocephalic trunk left common carotid artery left subclavian artery cervical part of the esophagus right and left vagus nerves Timus gland, also the uh, right and left brachiocephalic veins, uh, phrenic nerve, but inferior part also is divided into three subdivisions: anterior, middle, and posterior. Middle part is corresponded to the pericardium, pericardium with the heart enclosed in pericardium, 
and the elements of the main bronchi right and left pulmonary veins two at each side and pulmonary arteries the single at the each side and also phrenic nerve it locates here this at the superior mediastinum locates in superior mediastinum here it is located in the middle mediastinum posterior part of posterior mediastinum is belong to the esophagus very important moment superior of the esophagus located in the superior mediastinum here is the in the posterior mediastinum right and left sympathetic tracts very important moment the sympathetic trunk it's the uh, sympathetic ganglia uh, 10 to 12 in number pair structures the size are similar to each other 3 5 millimeter they are located on the posterior mediastinum and they also receive the uh, whitish um, communicating branch Rama communicans alba and they gives the Rama communicans grisea but you have to know also we have explained uh, we will explain it during the abdominal organs the explanation of the abdominal topography fifth to ninth uh, sympathetic thoracic ganglia they form the fibers which pass through this ganglia form the greater splanchnic nerve and the fibers which pass through the 10th, 11th ganglia from the lesser splanchnic nerve. The main sources for uh, creation of the celiac plexus or the sunrise plexus. The topography of heart, which I have explained it. Serous pericardial reflection, yes, you are looking at again. And the elements of the lungs on the helum of the each lung, the elements of the BAVV. As we explained during the practical classes on the hilum of the right lung the bronchus main bronchus locates superior than the artery and two veins at the left side the artery locates superior than the bronchus and the two veins i have explained the topography of the lungs again you are looking at the position of the inferior border of the lung here the, and the passing of the anterior border to the inferior border on the left side and the creation here the superior and inferior interpleural sacs superior and inferior uh, areas topography of heart again between the second and the fifth intercostal spaces as located and about the mammary gland which is located on the fascia of the pectoral region on the fascia of the pectoralis major muscle the many uh, fat tissue in this uh, sample, for example, because the this cadaver was the in menopause period, and the nipple, and the location on the fascia, it makes the mammary gland very and very movable organ, and we are interested in the some anatomical structures like the you are look at the nipple, look at the lobules because the between the 15 20 lob lobules uh, form the structure of the mammary gland and the lymph vessels from the mammary gland they passes to the axillary lymph nodes the, we are divided the mammary gland into the four quadrants upper lateral uh, the upper medial inferior lateral and inferior medial mainly lymph the through this gland pass to the axillary lymph nodes and the parasternal lymph nodes and the location it's between the third till the sixth uh, costal cartilage and the, um, being the very movable organ it's covered by the skin and around the skin at the center form the areola the pigmented regio and it is the supplied by the branches from the intercostal arteries from the second to six intercostal uh, posterior intercostal arteries give them the rami mammaria lateralis and also innervation of this radio the, the also this main source of this innervation the intercostal nerves supply the uh, innervation of the mammary gland provide this innervation of the mammary gland um, I have finished my uh, today's lecture 
if you have the any uh, questions uh, you can contact with me uh, thank you for attention